earth and there are three parts to it the core that's a liquidy bit in the center then around that you've got the mantle the mantle the inside part is less rigid it can move it's liquidy and then the outer part is more rigid and it's solid and then around that we've got the crust the next term we you need to know is lithosphere the lithosphere is the combination of the crust plus the outer mantle and the lithosphere is solid and it's less dense than the mantle so the lithosphere sits on top of the mantle it doesn't sink through it because it's less dense and the lithosphere is made out of tectonic plates as we shall look at which are able to move around now as a scientist there are a couple of problems in, ter in terms of studying the structure of the earth I have to drill through the crust that's too thick I can't do that the other thing I need to use to study it is seismic waves but that's either by causing massive nuclear explosions or by looking at earthquakes so there's some of the problems with studying the structure of the earth now we're looking at the theory of plate tectonics the idea that the continents aren't in a fixed position but they're on plates and those plates are able to move albeit very very slowly and the theory was developed by a guy called Wegener in 1914 right how does the theory go why do the plates move well in the mantle there are convection currents and the plates sit on top of a convection current and if the convection current is going that way then the plate will move and the plates move at about 2.5 centimeters a year now there are two types of plate oceanic and continental and let's say they're moving together I know that if an oceanic plate hits a continental plate the oceanic plate is more dense and it goes under the continental plate and that process is called subduction and part of the oceanic plate will then go down towards the magma and will begin to melt a bit and that's called partial melting okay here's a little bit about how the plate tectonic theory was developed Wegener came up with it in 1914 um, he looked at the shape of the different continents and figured out that at one time they must have all been stuck together However, it was not accepted at the time as he didn't have enough evidence and it wasn't until the 1960s where new evidence came about of something called sea floor spreading. Now the scientific community accepts the theory as being correct as there's now more research and more evidence for the theory.